Hey guys, I am going to cover the positive and negatives on all three of these seating dies. They all are different styles and I want to tell you why I use the ones on each cartridge that I use. So starting off we have a Lee seating die. This one is cartridge specific. So this one is a 223. We have a piece of 223 brass in here. Essentially there is a little chamber into the die itself and as we seat this up you want to set the die where it comes in contact with your shell holder so that when the press reaches the top of the stroke, this has centered itself in that chamber within the die. Now taking a look at the internals, it is super simple. This little collar right here is what comes in contact with the bullet, and that is what seats it down into the case as you lift your ram. Again, super simple design. This guy just drops down into this cap. It does move around a little bit to allow a bullet that is not being pushed into the die straight. If it comes in on an angle, it allows it to grab it and straighten it before it seats it all the way in. I'd say the positives of this die are the cost effectiveness and also how simple it is. But the downsides to this die is that the brass is not held straight until the very top of the stroke. So your bullet is getting seated um, before your brass is actually held straight. Next up is our Hornady Universal Seating Die. Now this one does come in kits where it has specific cartridges, but the only specific die in those cases is actually the resizing die. So the seating dies are universal, and I'm gonna show you why. This is a piece of 300 blackout. That's what this one is actually for. That small silver ring on the inside edge of that, that is where the top of the case mouth comes in contact with this die. That is the reference for when it actually seats your bullet in there. So you can see it has a sliding collar. This sliding collar has a little bit of wiggle to it so that it allows it to self-center. Unfortunately though, this thing has a ton of wiggle room going off of the case mouth like it does, which means that you're relying on your shell holder to hold everything center, but your shell holder has a ton of wiggle too. So basically, the major downside to this is concentricity. It's not going to hold your round straight while it's seating your bullet. Let's crack it open and take a look at what's going on inside here. One major positive on these Hornady dies is their interchangeable seating stems, which basically means that I can use long target bullets and then I can use shorter hunting bullets. And Hornady does have different specs on different calibers so that you can get the exact fit that you're looking for on the bullets that you're using. This is the floating collar that I was referring to on that Hornady die. Like I say, you can see that little silver ring there. That's where the brass in index is on there. And then up top, this is simply where that little seating stem drops into. And then this whole guy moves in and out. So as you push your brass in there, if the bullet is not seated yet, it will pull the top of that seating stem out. And then once it reaches the top of the press stroke, interact with this guy. And as you lift your ram, it's going to start seating your bullet down into the brass. The positives for this die is that they are semi-universal and that it does have the interchangeability on that seating stem. I do like that so I can get the custom fit that I'm looking for depending if I'm using target or hunting bullets when I'm reloading. We are getting to my top choice for when I'm looking for the utmost precision and accuracy out of my rifles. Unfortunately, they come with a higher cost and they are also a little more complex of a seating die itself. So let's start with the top. Up top, we have a micrometer where you can actually see and read exactly what kind of adjustments you're making to the overall length of your bullet, which is a very good thing. If you uh, are reloading a bullet for the first time, hit it with your calipers and then you say, oh, okay, I wanna move that in 30 thousandths. So you just go ahead and move that in 30 thousandths. To me though, this does read backwards. It doesn't make a whole lot of sense. If I wanna move it in 30 thousandths, the number actually decreases, which is a little strange to me. Now, as you're pulling this apart, there is a little bit of spring tension. Okay, there's our spring. And the reason there is spring tension is the entire internal collar that moves with this. So as you can see here, there's that little seating stem. I do have a loaded cartridge in here, so it is pushing that out because that is the overall length that I chose. These seating stems, I believe, are interchangeable. You'd have to double check on uh, Redding's website. I'm pretty positive that Redding would have interchangeable seating stems because they have a ton of option parts for their dies. Now, this is actually just a universal body for their seating dies. It's threaded up top and then it allows the internal collar to move in and out. The die is actually marked on this collar. So this one says six millimeter Creedmoor. Um, and this is where the chamber is cut to interact with your cartridge here. 
So basically there is a shoulder area, there is a neck area, and then up top is where your bullet seating stem moves in and out to interact with this. So because this is under spring tension, your ram, when you're setting it up on the press, you actually want the top of the stroke to push this up into the die. So there is going to be some spring pressure on the brass as it's getting seated, which is a really good thing. That's going to hold everything perfectly centered where you want it down here. And then when your press reaches the top of the stroke, that's when it starts to actually seat the bullet. So your brass is held in place before the bullet really starts getting seated down into where it's gonna go. So this is what's going on inside your die. So as it reaches the top of the stroke, um, this guy does have just a little pin that reaches down in between that spring and ultimately pushes that bullet seating stem down into the brass. Now one of the reasons these Redding dies are so expensive is because of the awesome machining and the really tight tolerances that they run on these. There is no wiggle room at all on this seating stem right here. And then as we drop it down into the body, this has a really awesome fit and finish as well. Glides super smooth. And then of course the micrometer seating stem up top. This took a little bit of research and engineering to figure out. So that's gonna add some cost in there as well, but it does add a ton of convenience when reloading. Well guys, that's gonna be my choices on each different cartridge. So something like this, I'm going to run on something where I don't care all that much about like super precision. Uh, maybe something like 300 blackout would actually be a good use on the lead eyes. Unfortunately, I can only find Hornady dies at this point in time. Um, so the lead dies I've used for 6.5 Creedmoor and got really good results with. It is super consistent on how long it seats them. Um, I found that there's just not much flex or anything in this, so super consistent seating depth, as well as I like that the chamber holds it straight. On the Hornady dies, it is a semi-universal die. I like the interchangeability of the seating stem, but I really don't like how much wiggle room there is when something is getting seated. On the Redding, I really can't complain about anything on this other than its cost, but I understand why it's expensive. It's just because they put forth the research and development, and that's what brings the cost up on this, as well as it's more complex than these are. There's more parts and pieces going on in here, but ultimately, it makes the straightest round. And I've checked that on a concentricity gauge. Unfortunately, I don't have one here to demonstrate it at my reloading bench, but uh, maybe in the future we'll get to that. Hope you guys learned something about these different reloading dies. Let me know in the comments if you have any questions. Let me know what you guys are using. I'm definitely curious. I always want to hear about the latest and greatest. So if you found a better way, let me know. Until then, we'll see you guys in the next one.